Hello everyone, I'm Sohini, product manager at Canonical, the company that brings you Ubuntu. And this is my colleague, Alex Hulkias. Hello, today we will talk to you about Kubernetes on Windows using Canonical solutions in a very straightforward and resource light way. Today, I'm thrilled to invite the WSL Corsair Docker Captain and Microsoft MVP, Nuno, to walk us through a demo of how to unleash the power of Kubernetes on Windows. Today, we'll demonstrate how smooth and lightweight Kubernetes on Windows can be and how you can easily set it up for yourself. First, we'll do a quick introduction on Kubernetes, reminding you what it is and how it can support your development work. Then we'll talk about two tools, Microcates and WSL2, that make accessing Kubernetes on your Windows machine so easy. And then the main event will have my friend Nuno demonstrate how to set it up. So let's get started. Alex, tell us a little bit about Kubernetes. During the past five years, Kubernetes has enjoyed unparalleled growth, so much so that it has really evolved into the new way of deploying and maintaining software applications. Developers appreciate containers as they bring elasticity and maintainability for applications. Kubernetes helps orchestrate application deployments and automate application lifecycle operations. The combination of containers and Kubernetes reduces time to market and leaves organizations the space to innovate and focus on growing their business. So Kubernetes is critical now for so many businesses to be successful and have a competitive advantage. But with most existing Kubernetes solutions out there, it's not a simple process to set it up. It could be cumbersome just to try it out. That's because typically running a Kubernetes cluster requires a lot of configuration just to get started. To add to the complexity, Kubernetes runs on Linux. And if you've joined us here today, it's likely you've got a Windows machine, either because you like developing on it personally or your company handed it to you when you started on your job. So it's currently possible to run a Kubernetes cluster on a Windows machine in a highly isolated environment that requires a few more steps for configuration. But if you're looking for something a little bit more lightweight with more interoperability on Windows, our demo will show you exactly how. Alex, tell us a little bit more about the tools we'll need. Using Microcates and WSL2, you can deploy your Kubernetes clusters in a Windows native way. This will boost your productivity as you will be able to run your business application with increased interoperability and reduce complexity. Let's start with Microcates. The Kubernetes market is already saturated with all sorts of solutions. We want to talk to you about Microcates, what we consider being the easiest way to learn, use, and master Kubernetes and its benefits. Microcates is a lightweight, production-grade, conformant Kubernetes that can be installed on any machine in under 60 seconds. It has all the core components of a standard Kubernetes and comes also packing some great features. It uses Ubuntu snap packaging mechanism that brings out of the box security enhancements to applications. Microcates is ideal to quickly build Kubernetes single node or multi-node clusters and can run from a developer's workstation to the edge and on IoT, appliances, and other resource-constrained environments. Its main use cases include building local CI-CD pipelines or setting up disposable Kubernetes for production CI-CD. You can also use it as an embedded, auto-updating Kubernetes for IoT applications, use it to build local container registries for commonly used container caching, or to experiment with a CNCF application landscape. You can also do machine learning and AI as Microcate supports Kubeflow and GPU acceleration. So, Microcates is the easiest and fastest way to bring up a full Kubernetes cluster. But how do we access it on Windows? Our answer is the Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL2, the latest version. The Windows Subsystem for Linux is an official feature of Windows brought to you by Microsoft. It enables you to run native Linux command line tools directly on Windows. WSL2 is powered by a real Linux kernel and a lightweight virtual machine that boots in under two seconds. In the demo, you'll notice two things. One, how fast it is. 
even if you used WSL1 before, you will notice a significant improvement in the time to execute. The second thing, interoperability. You can move seamlessly between containers, your Linux and Windows, and leverage more of the apps that you want. Another exciting differentiation is again, this is a Windows feature. We at Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, were the first to partner with Microsoft in developing WSL. And because we've been working very closely together, we've ensured we have a very compatible, smooth user experience. It's for that reason we do recommend to get the most out of WSL2, you download Ubuntu's 2004 LTS or long-term support release. And that's the distro you'll see Nino leverage in just a few moments. But most importantly for us today, Ubuntu on WSL2 will enable you to bring up a full Kubernetes cluster. I'd love to tell you more about it, but instead I'll let my friend, the WSL Corsair Nuno, to show you in his demo. Okay, Nuno, show us the magic. So hi everyone, my name is Nuno Do Carmo. I'm the WSL Corsair. And for this demo, before I go there in details, I will just like to show you like the technology stack that we'll be using. So first of all, we'll be using Windows 10, of course, um, the newest uh, version, 2004. And thanks to this latest version of Windows 10, what will be possible to do is also to have the home uh, version instead of just pro and enterprise, which is really cool. So all our home users, welcome. And uh, uh, once we do have Windows 10 installed, then we can have WSL and specifically WSL2 west edition uh, on this one um, we will be using ubuntu 2004 which is the latest one also uh, who came out last month uh, focal fossa the code name and once everything is installed then we can enable system d that will allow us to have access to snap and thanks to that we will be able to install microcades of course we will be seeing a multi-node cluster. So for this multi-node, we will need two non-users or non-administrator users in Windows 10. Uh, everything will be detailed in a blog post. And uh, well, uh, let's go for the demo. So here we have a WCL2 distro. Uh, distro is Ubuntu 20.04, the latest one, uh, Focal Fossa. That just came out uh, last month, and we are using also the latest Microsoft kernel for WSL2. So before we can install microcades, actually we will need to first to enable systemd. Uh, there's some scripts and more information will be provided in the description of this video. And once systemd is uh, enabled, uh, it will allow us uh, to have the snaps. And Snap uh, is the feature that is mandatory to install microcades. So once we have all that installed, what we can do is first look at um, microcades uh, Snap. It will provide us a series of informations. And uh, here, what interests us for now is the which is the latest stable, uh, which is one eighteen. Uh, two, which is the latest also uh, stable um, Kubernetes version, which is great and it will uh, be enough for us. So to install it, we will run the snap install and we will choose our microcade snap and then we will pass the classic installer. So here it will first download the core snap, which is mandatory. And once it's uh, downloaded, it will install it it should just take a few seconds and then it will also download microcades first before you can install it as you can see depending on your internet speed it, it might be really really fast so let's wait that it finish once it's done it will install it set up and that's it we have it so again if we just run a snap list, we can see now that microcades with the version, which is the version also of Kubernetes, has been installed. So perfect. From here, uh, if we try to do a microcades, sorry, microcades um, status, 
it will complain that we do we are not in the right groups. So hopefully for us and very intelligently from the microcase team, they provided the, the right commands just to run. So here we can copy. First we add our uh, account to the group microcase, and then just to ensure that uh, we have the ownership of the dot cube used by Kubernetes uh, directory, then we we change the owner. Once we have done that, we will need to actually uh, log in again. So let me start a new shell. Here we go. And now, if I run the same command again, the microcades, you see, there's no more errors, and now it states that it's running. And here is the list of add-ons that I will be able to install. Uh, we will just do that in a second. We will also see that uh, microcades uh, comes with the kubectl command. And if I get everything that has been installed at microcades inside uh, the Kubernetes cluster, we can see that it's just the default service. So that's why it's also called microcades which is very, very cool. So a uh, very small footprint equals also more security from the get-go. So now that we have that, uh, like I said, uh, let us just run again the status and have a look about the add-ons. And what we will be uh, adding is actually the DNS and the dashboard. Okay, so let's do it. So it will be running by uh, microcades enable and then the name of the, the add-ons, which is DNS and the dashboard. It will take just a little bit of time. And as you can see, there's no YAML involved for us. We just are running these commands and it installed it for us, which is really, really great. So here, as you can see, the DNS has been installed and then it started to create also the dashboard and here now it, it states like okay if we want to access the dashboard then we should run these commands which i will do so first it will get the token and then here it will display the token which i will need which is this long string here uh, to actually uh, get to um, the dashboard so now to get to the dashboards, however, uh, it will not do, will not be enabled just like that because it's running on what we say like the cluster um, IP, which is unreachable from uh, external. So here again, if I get the services this time, and I will just use the dash capital A, which is all spaces, I can see, like I said, that the Kubernetes dashboard is running on this IP that is not reachable from uh, my outside computer. Let's say it's internally of the cluster of Kubernetes cluster. So uh, to do that, what we can do quite easily is actually do a port forward. So uh, we will use again the micro gates, kubectl, and then uh, it will be a long string. So we will use the namespace cube system, which is the namespace where the dashboard has been installed. Then we'll pass the port forward. And finally, we will uh, bind it to the old uh, addresses because remember we are in WSL2, so it needs to go down also to Windows so we can uh, get it. Um, then uh, we want this service Kubernetes dash dashboard. And finally, uh, we are binding the port 5000 on our side of computer to the port 443 uh, to the inside, to the dashboard running Kubernetes. Once we do that, uh, of course, if I do a wrong typo, you can see it's live. So here now it's running on port 5000. So if I bring now my uh, browser and I go to port 5000 and as you could see it was normally it will complain that okay it's an HTTPS right so here I'll just run HTTPS and then now I, it will say okay it's not it's a private uh, I don't have the 
the certificate which is true because it was automatically generated. So here on the token, now I can copy my long string that I had before. And when I will sign in here, I can see uh, my service running. And more importantly, now if I go to the nodes, I can see my nodes running. Let's stay here. And until, he, until he, here, I mean, we do not have anything special. Like you can get these uh, with other uh, Kubernetes clusters. Now, what if we could actually get a more uh, complex setup with uh, several nodes? So again, the microcades, uh, if I do a status again, it just running here, it has this dashboard and DNS. So let's bring actually two friends. <laughs> two other nodes now and uh, with the nice design from Sylvia Ritter um, for Focal Fuxa. So what we can do now is out of the box is create a cluster and I will just call again command from microcades and this one is uh, microcades add node and we tell me okay if you want to add the node you can add it with this IP here. So one thing that I did uh, prior and that will be explained in a blog post uh, is that I set uh, local IPs. So from here, from my other WSL2 uh, instance running on the same computer, uh, I can run it like that. Oh, okay. Looks like I installed it uh, again. Let's do it quickly. What it requests, like, like you see, it's pretty much live. Right, so let's, let's exit from here and let's exit from here and let's bring them again back with the right groups. Okay, so if I come from the first one, uh, not this command, sorry, let's bring the command correctly here. Here we go. So now it's starting to join here. Let's do directly again another add node so every node that we will add we will have this uh, uh, ash that will be different okay so let me run it and what we can do here actually is a watch of microcades cube ctl and get nodes and we can see that the node 2 is not ready the node 1 just finished and we can compare it perfect and while the latest node is uh, being added which is just completed now but now if I try from the node do a micro case state just the status right it will complain that okay this node is part of a cluster so I need to run the commands on the master which is this one and okay so we added two nodes we have a dashboard running normally, so let's bring the the proxy. Sorry, let's not that one. Let's bring the port forward to port five thousand. Let's bring again our uh, Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, and now finally we get the nodes, and that's it. We add nodes. Uh, we added the nodes, sorry, we added two nodes, we can see them here, um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for, uh, for listening, and uh, back to you, uh, Alex and Sweeney. Thank you, Nuno. To wrap this up, let's get into the key takeaways from this presentation. WSL offers a native way to run Linux on Windows 10 machines. Microcades is the easiest way to Kubernetes. Within a few minutes and with just 10 commands, you can have a multi-node Kubernetes cluster to run your applications. And as Nuno demonstrated, both WSL and Microcades have a low footprint, are really lightweight, and are generally a great combination for resource-constrained environments. Microcades follows upstream Kubernetes releases currently on version 1.18. You can learn more about microcates on the official website and read more details about the demo on Nino's blog. Also, if you're just getting started with WSL2, please check out our WSL website on ubuntu.com forward slash WSL 
And if you have any feedback or ideas, we'd really love to hear from you either by email or you can message us on Twitter. Also, feel free to experiment with any of the CNCF trail map projects using microcates and let us know of your experience through our communication channels.